Uh, this is not a vlog, and I'm fucking out of focus again. Huh? Huh? Okay. If you don't watch my videos and you've found this by the, the great link that the algorithm has led you here, then welcome. I make vlogs, but I also make art. And this video is just to explain my first NFT. I've been talking about NFTs probably for a couple of months now. I talked about crypto art, brainstorming, trying to figure out what I want to do, which has led me to right now, why I've chose this first design, what it is, the history of it, just uh, you know, in a video format. It's not a video log. Well, it is a video log. It's just not a vlog. It is a vlog, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so NFT or nifty as you're gonna hear me say, stands for non-fungible token. Non-fungible basically means uh, non-replaceable or unique. If Michael Jordan gave you a pair of his shoes after a game that he had worn, those are non-fungible. They are a one of one. It's the only pair of shoes he wore on whatever, January 9th, 1987. That pair of shoes would not be replaceable with just a regular Air Jordan off the shelf here, even though it's the same exact shoe that came out in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? See what I'm going there? So, token is something that lives on the internet because it lives on a blockchain and this blockchain is ethereum now if you don't understand any of that i'm probably not the guy to teach it to you anything that has perceived value essentially could be a nifty documentaries about fake paintings people can't confirm where shit came from so this solves that problem showing provenance and showing proof of work a history of it, a basic history. And because it's on the blockchain, it's not just one person's account, it's the entire blockchain, you, you know, where, you know, there's a lot, a whole bunch of people. You can't just forge something because everything has to be verified on the blockchain. Music videos we've seen, people are making jewelry now, anything that can be displayed essentially. People are coupling real paintings with digital versions. And moving into the future, we're probably gonna have displays everywhere. The, the bet that people are making is that displays are going to be um, a part of basically the infrastructure, I guess, of life. I mean, we're gonna digital displays instead of posters. You see billboards that are digital now, and then there's gonna be more space to advertise to you, car windows, anything glass, your table at a restaurant, all of these things could turn into displays. So this concept is a little polarizing. It's got a lot of hype around it. Uh, a lot of people don't really understand it. People can right click and save the photo and they think that that is the same thing as actually owning the actual original, which it's not. We're just not used to this. Like, we take for granted how much we get to use art for free in general. On Twitter, I use a bunch of GIFs. They're not mine. I just find them in a database. Some artist somewhere made them. Um, a way for people to get paid for their work, even though you're not going to get paid when I use it because there's no like commercial use type situation yet. Who knows where that may go? I have no idea. So no, I don't think if you buy the original that you all of a sudden get the rights to the original. It's not like you owning the masters of um, a Beatles album or anything. You're not going to get paid when it gets played. A lot of celebrities are making kind of weird stuff. You know, a lot of the YouTubers are making just like trading cards. I don't know. I just find it weird. Like if people who've never made art like Jake Paul or whatever he doesn't make art in the first place and then to do a, a nifty is just kind of strange you know like Charmin I think did nifties just very strange there's a lot of hype around it but a new thing that's expanding would be expected for there to be you know fuckery with within enormous prices that stuff is selling for are kind of turning people off definitely reinforces the fact that it's a bubble that will pop but the thing is with bubbles pop yes they pop and then everything settles down and then kind of operates somewhat in a normal range there's a an adjustment just like stock and just like I didn't believe that we would ever really make clear video calls on our phones when I first got my first iPhone I didn't think I'd ever be able to type on the screen like I didn't think type efficiently on a piece of glass and now I can't imagine having a tactile button so why people buy NFTs um, the same reason that people buy really much anything rare stones because they're hard to get or then people buy rare shoes baseball cards I mean they're just cardboard with pictures printed on them and you know their value goes up based on whether or not the card printing company did a good job printing it. Most things, or if not all things, have no real value. The value comes from other people wanting it. It's a created scarcity. It's a false sense of scarcity in a way because an artist could decide to uh, create as many versions of something as they want. So you're having faith in the artist to not, you know, just sell out his fan base with a bunch of bullshit. The world's constantly changing. I mean, basically every day you get online and everyone's arguing about how the world should change. And that's the same thing for investments. You know, these old investment strategies and these older companies that people don't really care about, especially the youth, uh, they don't want to invest in the same things. Like you used to come up and you'd only invest in the stock market. How 
housing market and now if nothing else there's new markets there's a crypto market to invest in and this is a lot more interesting uh it's a way to buy art which in the art world if you want to invest in art is already you know not the easiest kind of a renaissance in a way a new place for new art to exist and for new artists uh, make careers because a lot of artists out here struggle and if this new system allows artists to keep making art then I'm pretty much all for it. Uh, and then there's just the collectors. Like some people are just avid fans and they believe in the future and they think I'm gonna be able to display this in my house. Like my whole house might be a display. It might wrap around my entire house. I might be able to walk into this painting. There's a Van Gogh exhibit down the street in Vegas that you literally are walking into the painting and they're already doing this in VR. You can buy an NFT and you're in VR and you, know, you can enter inside a 2D painting that makes a three dimensional world. You know, if you open your mind, there's a a lot of possibilities to how pieces can be displayed, broadcast an image, I don't know, whatever. You could have a painting, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like an exhibition opening in Taiwan, but also broadcast it around the world at the same time. Like everything could be in sync not the band. Some senses, you would have to ship that painting to a museum. Museum would have to do all the things it does, hang it up, have a whole thing, everybody has to come out, everybody's gotta catch coronavirus just to see the painting, when they could just do it from comfort of their home pod. How much do you believe the future is gonna change, and how much did you just go through a huge change in your own life witnessing something that none of us have ever had to live through, which really reinforces the idea that people are going to uh, just change the way that they live and change the way they interact with things. Uh, some of the reasons that people don't buy NFTs, they just don't simply understand it, which is also fine. Uh, the internet, I understand a lot of things when they first came out. And there's also the rumor of an environmental impact. Uh, someone wrote a blog post saying that the environmental impact was enough to basically uh, power an entire city for a year if you meant one token, which is completely not true. Uh, the guy who wrote that article doesn't seem like super smart to me. He honestly, just kind of comes off like a dick and it doesn't make any sense. And if you want to get the facts straight, you can find the facts that Ethereum makes up 0.02% of carbon emissions. NFTs themselves make up 0.0006%. So YouTube makes up 0.3%. We're all destroying the environment doing a lot of things. Now, can it be better? Yes. Are they trying to make it better? Yes. So that's all that matters. But this whole victimizing of artists who are trying to create a new space for themselves, um, because artists are making money you're gonna pass on the blame and the whole new like social justice brigade of the world on every single problem must be addressed you can't do anything it kind of uh, blocks change it stunts growth it's just not true like people just find things to sensationalize so many people hit me up being like, I can't believe you're gonna mint an NFT and destroy the environment well I'm not and your response to me just to destroy the environment just as much and you drive your car to destroy the environment and all the things that you're doing all the videos that you're watching all this stuff it comes with a cost your presence here on earth leaves a footprint I mean, it's as simple as that. You take a step, Doc, there's a footprint. So now that I've explained <laughs> NFTs in depth, I feel like I'll talk about my actual NFT that I released, or my nifty. I've been calling it an NFT, even though I still haven't called it a nifty. Put out a bunch of art over the years. I mean, I've done thousands and thousands of tattoos. Hundreds, if not thousands t-shirts by now I mean, we gotta be getting close a lot of art thing that people can consume from me other than a personal tattoo is a painting or a piece of clothing basically a lot of the graphics that I have in the vault are from either sketches for tattoos full-on paintings and hundreds of graphics that I've released on t-shirts so when I was searching through all this stuff trying to figure out what I wanted to release first and kind of trying to find the beginning get weird like that and like to do this organized thing in my mind so trying to find the beginning I discovered this graphic it no it is the first day digital graphic that I ever made. Because at the time, I didn't know anything about digital graphics, and that's when I met Alex. Alex is actually the one that did the line work in Illustrator, because I have no, still really have no idea how to use Illustrator, but I have no idea how to do anything on a computer. This is before iPads had pencils. This is before Procreate. Not before Wacom, but I didn't have anything like that or the capabilities or the understanding. So anyway, this is it. I found it. I didn't realize it until I saw it again. And it even kind of blew my mind a little bit because it's like a hybrid sort of bear. Now I use a bear in a lot of my stuff as a mascot. Gave me the chills because when I looked at it again, I was like, holy shit, this is like, uh, what's the word? Like foreshadowing. It had a QR code in the eye, which the QR code still leads to my website, 
which was super surprising. So I had the website and I had all these ideas that I just couldn't bring into fruition at the time. I had all these music ideas, merch ideas, all this stuff I wanted to do. It just wasn't there yet. I hadn't really put in the work. So this idea got shelved. Like this logo was made into a sticker. Nothing ever happened from it and it just got buried with everything else because I continue to work and forget about things, whatever. Life goes on. I unearthed this design and I thought it was perfect. I think it represents uh, just the beginning. That's why I call it a genesis. It's the beginning of online creation for me. It's kind of the predecessor to all this digital work that I didn't even know I was going to create at the time. And then, you know, things like shirts are, they're limited. Like I can't make an, uh, really the stress of my whole life is making stuff in enough numbers to fulfill demand. And even if I fulfill short term demand in six months, someone's going to hit me up and go, damn, I wish I'd gotten that shirt. Now a nifty doesn't really solve that problem because you know, having the graphics, not like having the shirt, but for a collector and for this new space of collections. These graphics could be gone, never printed again. Someone might want to collect them. So I think this design uh, serves as a great starting point for me to go back into the archives, release more stuff, and then just uh, kind of build on this. As I'm working on new new stuff as well, uh, when I first discovered Nifties, I thought I needed to go make all these 3D animations that I'm not used to making, which I really want to make. Like I really want to do cool animation stuff and release them, but I don't know how to use these programs. So in the meantime, in order to uh, have that that sort of progression be shown, I want to release the stuff I've already made first. So the way it works is that the Nifty is on an auction. It's on Rarible. The link will be in the description. Uh, there's already been bids on it because it's been up for like a week. So if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, it's already been up. I'm going to accept the bid very soon, probably within 24 hours of this vlog going up. My idea is not to run the number up to this like astronomical number, not trying to make my stuff just super unaffordable for my actual fan base. My idea is to sell these um, at least initially at a price where people can get in so that if it does come to a point where these things are just worth more money to more people people who are early adapters get you know rewarded for that because like I said this is a, something that not everybody's even super into some people think it's absolutely crazy some I mean people think all kinds of things but also people are buying LeBron moments that can easily be replayed on ESPN a lot of money I don't even know the number I know it's like in the fucking tens of 20s of thousands of dollars and if not more so it's happening you know I, I can sit around and shake my fist at the world about how all these things that are happening around me uh, are terrible and stupid and I don't understand them but it's happening and I have art or we'll just say 24 hours from the time that this is uploaded I'm gonna accept whatever bid is there and um, that'll be the start of my nifties and I'll just keep releasing them as I see fit never know I might just wake up one morning and want to do a collection I think that's one of the coolest parts about this just the ability to do a release like hey boom I'm doing a release if someone wants to buy it cool and you can do all this cool shit like coupling paintings together you know real cool ideas that you can just kind of you know implement to get people excited or to just make you excited about your own work that's really what life is it's a, a big production if you don't put any effort into these things they're all flat anyway things that's why sports get people going shoes get people going movies comic books all these things it's uh creating a story creating scarcity in that story and creating things people can collect yeah it's cool and it's probably the future this is my video log of why I did the first design that I did, where it's available, what it means, and uh, why the next designs are coming the way they are. So probably gonna be a vlog this weekend. I just, I, it's, this week so far has just been the same. Just painting, 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 working on this project, and just trying to get like business stuff done. Yeah, red tattooing, all this, you know, all the craziness. The craziness that is my life. Um, all right, I'm out. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Peace.